Today's gospel encounter of Jesus and the crowds is a difficult passage to penetrate with only a casual or superficial reading. For a moment, put yourselves in, in the sandals of the crowd listening to these mysterious words of Jesus, statements about being glorified or what happens to wheat seeds after they are planted and the relationship between loving life and losing it. The Gospel writer John tells us that the listening crowd was so mystified by the words that they resorted to magical thinking about uh, explaining these words. Jesus then goes on and adds to the confusion by speaking words about judgment of the world and being lifted up and drawing all people to himself. What in the world does all this mean? These poor people, or those poor people who were listening, were even more confused, and the mysterious words continued to be mysterious even down to us today who heard this account this morning. The words are so mysterious that poor John, the gospel writer, has to help us out just a bit by adding a note saying, Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die, which is rather confusing too. Too often, there is confusion between magic and mystery. Sometimes it's hard to see what makes the two different. Such was the predicament of the crowd hearing Jesus speak. Too often, too often we hear God described as if God were a magician, like Dorothy standing in front of the Wizard of Oz. Do you remember the Wizard of Oz? Dorothy and her friends toiled and struggled to get to the city, to get an interview with the wizard, to get what they're asking for. One of them wants a heart, another wants a mind, another wants courage. And they plan to go to the wizard and to plead with him to magically transport them home and give them the gifts they desired. Sometimes this is how we treat God. It's all thunder and lightning. And in the movie, Dorothy and her friends are terrified until Toto, the little dog, pulls the curtain aside and reveals the fakery involved in creating the illusion of magical relief. Mystery, however, is another matter. There are different types of mystery. One kind is found in, in Agatha Christie murder novels. Somebody's murdered in the novel, and the plot revolves around solving the mystery of who done it. This is the kind of mystery we can solve and find out the answers. But there's another kind of mystery, and it's the kind of mystery that we find in the Gospels. It's a mystery that we can step into that we don't have to solve. It's a mystery that leads somewhere beyond the grave and into something different. For example, the universe, as I'm told, has no center and no edge. It is infinite. Now think about that for a moment. It's, it's difficult to imagine anything without a center or an edge. It's simply too vast to even comprehend. We cannot fully comprehend the infinite with our own finite minds. And yet that is precisely where we stand when we contemplate God and speak of God's infinite love for each of us and for every human being our finite, limited minds trying to grasp the infinite depths of God's love and mercy and God's intentions for us and for a broken in humanity. This is all way above our pay grade as humans. It's way above our finite capacity to understand infinite love and forgiveness and mercy, and yet it is precisely the message 
of Jesus' death and resurrection. We can't earn, we don't deserve God's infinite love and mercy, and yet there it is. And it's real. Lent and Easter are all about the depths to which God will go to make God's love known to us. You see, the universe may be too vast to have a center, but the universe in its infinity does have a heart, a welcoming, loving, and forgiving heart, and that heart is God, and the expression of that heart is to be found in the mystery of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Perhaps you've heard me say before that that we are all here today uh, and the earthly church exists because God has low standards in people. Now, we are here today because the love at the center and the heart of the universe expresses itself in forgiveness and understanding. The life, death, and resurrection of Jesus is all about an ocean depth of divine love and forgiveness and infinite acceptance that will not forsake a world broken by sin and violence. The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is the unbreakable seal on that promise. That's a mystery. And yet, there's more. The self-giving love of God expressed in Jesus' resurrection and then in the face of all that is wrong with the world and humanity also unleashes a power in human life. That power which can be known and felt and the results of it can be seen is the continuing power of the resurrected and living Jesus active in human life, and that power leads to service and healing and liberation and reconciliation. It is that very power of the resurrected Jesus that leads us to confront racism and all that oppresses and dampens and distorts human life. It is that power that leads us to seek and suffer, if necessary, for justice and peace. In the resurrection, Jesus has created a new race of people whose feet are firmly planted in the realities of life in this sinful and broken world, and who can face those realities and deal with them and meet them, and yet whose life is also planted firmly in the eternal life that God promises. One of Jesus' titles is Emmanuel, which means God is always with us. That is what love is about and gives us the freedom and the courage that comes from being loved. God is with us, and that is the promise. That is the mystery, and that is the hope and the confidence we gain when we place our courage and our confidence in the mystery of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and in the depths of God's love for us. The power of Jesus' resurrection in human life makes our world a better, more just, equitable, and abundant place for all people on this planet, and we are part of it.